this is an example of a floor jack and I'm going to show you how hydraulic cylinder is used in a floor jack. Um, so this example it says this is a three ton floor jack which is about 6,000 uh, pounds uh, capacity so it, it can lift 6,000 pounds. So first question is asking what's this cylinder force to develop that 6,000 pounds when this floor jack is completely horizontal. So if I draw that here it's going to look like this. So this is the pivot point and then it is lifting here that uh, 6,000 pounds or 3 tons. And then this arm is pushed by the cylinder. So this is the force we're going to calculate. This distance is given um, 3 inches and then this arm is 24 inches. Right now everything is in vertical. So to solve a cylinder problem we have to take moment with respect to the pivot point and which is 0. Everything sum to 0 and then for the cylinder force this is the this is the pivot point if this thing is pushed this way it's going to make a counterclockwise moment which is positive so positive f cylinder force times 3 inches and then this uh, 6000 pounds will make a clockwise moment with respect to this point this is the pivot point that we are taking the moment that's negative 6000 pounds times the distance which is 24 shortest distance and everything sum to 0 now if we solve for this cylinder force I calculated that 48,000 pounds 8 times more force needed to do the work to lift that 6,000 this next question it says that at the maximum angle which is something like 80 degree this is the pivot again and the cylinder is pushed this point F cylinder and that is given 3 inches and this is 24 inches of course this is not drawn to this scale but you got the idea so that's it now to calculate the moment now this is again the same pivot point we are going to calculate the moment with respect to the pivot so in that case that 6000 pound is going to act downwards so this is the distance we need to calculate that is now this kind of lined up here by chance but we are taking moment with respect to this point this pivot point so the distance we'll be looking at is this which is let's say that's d and if this angle is 80 we can calculate that d would be uh, 24 cosine 80 degree or theta and then 3 inches that is still the perpendicular distance. So if we take the moment with respect to the pivot point, summation of all moment is equal to 0. So then we can say F cylinder times the 3 inches of distance and that will make a counterclockwise again which is positive and the negative that 6000 pounds. So this is the 6000 pounds load which will make a clockwise moment with respect to this point. So that's negative 6000 pounds times 24 cosine 80 degree so the cylinder force now needed at this position I calculated 8335 pounds so as the car goes up the force required by the cylinder goes down uh, significantly it's a very smart design what type of lever is this um, does it sound counterintuitive um, now if you just look at the number it might look like a third class lever because you are lifting 6,000 pounds and you need 48,000 pounds which is 8 times more. However if you develop the equation let's just develop the equation. If you develop the equation for that so that's the pivot point. At 6,000 pounds cylinder is pushing right there. So let's say this is distance L1, this is my L2, so this cylinder force, so I can say if I take moment with respect to the pivot point again, summation of all moment to 0, so we can say F cylinder times L1, that's a positive moment, minus 
the load this is the load f load so you can say f load times the distance which is this if this is the theta we can write this distance will be l1 cosine sorry that's l2 i think i'll make l2 cosine theta so this will be l2 cosine theta everything sum to zero so the cylinder force can be solved as l2 divided by l1 times um, the cylinder the load that is lifting now one of the earlier video i have explained that that's the cylinder force i have explained the three classes of lever you can check this equation this is the equation for first class lever so this is not a second class lever this is a first class lever now once again as i said never use the direct equation solving any lever problem in apparent look it might look like a third class second class first class all you need to do is take moment with respect to the pivot point and then you can solve any lever problem and that's the that's what you do and if you have to find what kind of lever it is compare that with the class of lever that I explained in the video and the equation that you get from that particular problem in this case we have found this equation which is the uh, first class lever equation now does it sound counterintuitive um, it may because um, you not in first class lever you don't get any mechanical advantage and also because of this uh, packaging it has to go underneath the car you actually the arms are different lengths and size and you get about eight times more uh, force that is needed by the cylinder so it does look kind of like a counter interview however as you can see as the car goes off the force significantly goes down so that's uh, not necessarily a bad thing it's a very good thing that it goes down significantly because when you, you start from the ground there is no force basically zero force and then keep going when it just coming off the ground then you feel that six thousand pound until then when you're still on the ground some load are supported by the tire so you get that six thousand pound when the car is completely lift up okay why this kind of lever is used in the application this is completely because of packaging it has to go underneath the car it has to be low profile so it can go underneath and leave the car now next question if the floor jack is designed at 6000 psi what size hydraulic cylinder required for this application so the maximum force we need at the horizontal position which was 48000 so we can write the equation f equals pa force is 48000 pounds which is this thing works at 6000 psi and then the area pi by 4 uh, d square i have solved this d 3.19 inches i think some student got another result but that's what i got next question uh, assume that so this is the jack and as you know floor jack has handles so this is the situation now and also this handle use a pivot point this is the pivot point for the handle calculate the transfer uh, force to the small cylinder so this handle the person who is using is applying 50 pound force there and then how much is going to translate to this um, piston rod so again you can just simply take moment with respect to the pivot point anytime see you see a lever just take moments with respect to the pivot point you cannot really do any other theory because at the pivot point we don't know the direction of force it might be any direction this way that way that way that way we don't know so uh, if you have any pivot point if you want to solve any problem that has pivot point you should probably take moments with respect to the pivot point if I do that, then for the 50 pound force, we can say if this is an angle acting at, say, cosine theta, we don't know what's that. So that would be for that 50 pound force, we can say force times distance. So 50 pounds times distance is 39 cosine theta. So this is the perpendicular or shortest distance 
for that 50 pound force for the cylinder force the shortest distance would be this one now this length is 3 inches and then you got this theta so this length would be uh, 3 cosine theta so you have the cylinder force now this uh, hand force will make a counterclockwise and then um, this um, cylinder force you can't almost see this is the cylinder will act in clockwise so this is positive the cylinder is negative if cylinder this is we are talking about the small cylinder and that is 3 cosine theta away from that pivot point everything sum to 0 so then the cylinder force would be the cosine theta cancels 50 pounds times 39 inches divided by 3 inches so we get 650 pounds that's what I calculated now what size is this small cylinder so you have a force of 60, 650 pounds calculate the small cylinder uh, diameter now this is connected by the same system so same line is connected there so if 6000 psi here everywhere according to pascal law it's going to be 6000 psi so you write that 6000 psi here pound per square inch times area pi by 4 d square i have got that d 0.37 inches